Father, as we come to you this morning, we pray that you will help us to deal with uh, the turbulence and the struggles of this world, that you'll give us trust in you, that we can focus on the things that are most important. Pray that as I speak, that you'll guide my words, and that each one of us will hear you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you worry? Any of you? Any, anybody worry? I mean, there are things to worry about. I mean, there are things that uh, now, uh, you see the comic there, uh, active shooter drill today. My parents worry about the psychological implications of our masks. The fact is there's lots of things that you could be worried about in today's world. I mean, you could be worried about mass shootings. They've been happening. I don't know why they happen in America as much as they do. Uh, they happen in some other countries as well. But why people decide to go out and shoot a bunch of people in a random place, I, I, I don't get that. Um, you can worry about COVID or now monkeypox. You know, they say that if you bump into the wrong person or something, it's, uh, it's, it's more complicated than that. But some people are concerned about those things, right? Or how about um, war? War in the Ukraine. Uh, people think, you know, maybe if it gets out of hand, it'll affect us and we'll be drawn into that war. And there's wars in other parts of the country, or other parts of the, of the world, right? You could be worried about those things. What about inflation. Anybody worried about inflation? You know, um, we go to the grocery store, it's hard not to be worried about it, right? Or climate change. Some people say uh, it's not a big deal, but um, other folks go outside and go, huh, maybe this isn't just a hot wave, and, and they're worried about that as well. Or how about just like a personal thing, aging? Is anybody in here getting older? Yeah, you know, you can worry about all those kinds of things. You know, you can, you can worry. And then you probably have personal worries, things about communication in your family or other types of personal things. There's lots of things that we can worry about. And yet Jesus, you know, he, he talks about worry. So let's look at what he has to say. Read with me. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Yeah, so he just says, hey, don't worry. Is that helpful? No, it's not real helpful. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, uh, don't think about a white elephant. I mean, you, when you say that, you're going to start thinking about a white elephant. Don't worry. It's hard to stop worrying just by being told not to worry. It's a good thing that Jesus goes on. He doesn't just say don't worry because life is more important than just food and clothing. He goes on. Read with me. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, and yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than the birds. And originally, I was going to show that uh, slide, the, the picture of the, the ravens uh, sliding down the, the, the roof. Because ravens, one of the things about them is they're playful, right? And so I think when Jesus was talking about the ravens, he was, he was saying, hey, look, Pay attention. Look at the things I've made. These guys recognize that they're okay, that, that, that they can just enjoy life. But there's another story in the Old Testament about ravens. Anybody remember the story in the Old Testament during the drought about ravens? Elijah was a prophet, and there was a drought, and so God told him to go out to this little spring of water so he'd have some water to drink. And every day, what happened? The ravens brought him food. Yeah. And so Jesus is saying, hey, look, Think about this. God takes care of us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of you. He takes care of these birds out there that some of us just think are an annoyance. But he also takes care of each and every one of us. So the, the, the message is, don't worry. God is going to take care of you. That's a little better, right? That's a, that's a step forward. I think some of us probably are still worrying about things. Anybody still worrying or did we stop it all with that? No, we still do. It's, it's still kind of hard, right? So, read with me. Who, can, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? I heard somebody say, you know, worrying really does work. Because they said, I worry about things, and 95% of the things I worried about never happened. So it must work, right? No, it doesn't work. The fact is we worry about a lot of things. And Jesus says we shouldn't worry because, because we can't really change anything by worrying. You can't change it by worrying. In fact, if you worry, they did a study in, um, in Great Britain 
1994 to 2004 where they tracked a whole bunch of people and they gave them this inventory to find out how much they worried. And they, they, they ranked them as heavy warriors, medium warriors, and light warriors. And then they had a control group, right? Well, the light warriors, actually, this is interesting. The light warriors actually died more often than the, the control group. But the heavy warriors, they died in that study 94% more than the people who didn't worry. Worry not only can't add time to your life, it takes away time from your life when you worry about things. And so that, that's, a, that's a huge thing. So don't worry because it's not going to change anything anyhow. It's not going to make a difference. Have I got you now? Has everybody now stopped worrying? If we got, was that enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem, right? So let's, let's read. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Again, God says, look, I'm taking care of you. I mean, I take care of, of wildflowers that are only there for a day. I got you in this. I'm taking care of you. And that's really the message behind this. He says, we've got a God in heaven who takes care of us. I heard a story, a pastor said, that uh, he was flying on a flight and it, it was really, really turbulent. The flight was extremely turbulent. And as they started, they say, like they always do, please fasten your seatbelts. Um, you know, we're going to experience some rough air. Uh, we are, are not going to be giving you food or drinks or anything because it's a little bit rough. And then it got rougher and rougher and rougher. And even the seasoned, you know, people were starting to get a little bit nervous because the plane was bouncing around pretty heavily. But this pastor said he looked across and there was one little girl that was sitting by herself. She wasn't sitting with somebody else. And she was just, just sitting there and she didn't seem bothered at all. She was just reading her book and her feet were kicking. And they're going through all this really rough turbulence, and she never seemed to get upset. And so after the flight, he said, i got to talk to this little girl and see what was going on. And he went up to her, and he said, um, weren't you afraid? She said, nah. He said, well, why? Everybody else seemed pretty nervous. Why weren't you afraid? She said, oh, yeah, well, my daddy's the pilot, and he's taking me home. Now think about that. Isn't that beautiful? Because that's exactly why we as Christians don't worry. Because our daddy, our, my daddy, our daddy, he's the pilot and he's taking us home. Because we trust that he has it, that he's taking care of us. And the, the antidote to worry is trusting in a God who loves you and really is your daddy, who really cares about you. And he's watching over you each and every day. That's the antidote to worry. Read with me. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. There's a story that uh, John Wesley, he was a, 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 a theologian um, many years ago. But John Wesley was talking to a man about worry, and he, he asked the question to a guy. He said, um, why does the cow look over the wall? So why does the cow look over the wall? What's that? Looking for green grass? Well, actually, there's a real obvious reason, because he can't see through the wall. Right? He can't see through it. Now, as I thought about that, I thought that's exactly what happens with us in our worry. We're looking in the wrong place. What happens when we start focusing on COVID or monkeypox or war? We're looking at the wrong thing. See, we have to look over those things. We have to look at something that's bigger than those things. And what did Jesus say? He said, but, read with me, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. He says, don't get caught up in all your needs here in this world, but focus on the things that God has for you. Focus on the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean, seek his kingdom? Some people want to make that into another, another law and make you work real hard. You know, you've got to be, you got to be a good Christian. You've got to live out all this stuff. Seek his kingdom. We'll look at that in a minute. So first, don't worry. Focus on God's kingdom. Don't worry. Focus on God's kingdom. But where do we get that kingdom? Read with me. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. When I was overseas, they were translating the Bible and they were translating the, um, the Matthew's version of this. And they said, 
Um, seek first to do what God wants you to do, um, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And they change that into a law. But if you read Luke here, you can see pretty clearly it's not a law. The kingdom's not something you do. It's something that's given to you. Jesus came. He lived for you. He died for you. He took your sin upon himself. And now he gives you a totally different way of, of living and seeing the world. That's called his kingdom. He rules in your life. And that's a gift that he gives you. He rose from the dead so that you know that you have power over sin and death and all those kinds of things in the world. And so that kingdom is a gift. It's something that you have given from God. It's not, oh no, I've got to worry every single day. I've got, instead of worrying about COVID and those things, I've got to worry about God's kingdom. No, it's not like that. I just receive that gift of God's grace and trust in him each and every day. And that's how I focus on the kingdom, is by putting my trust in a father who loves me. And then that frees you, right? Read with me. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. He says, now look. You realize you've got a father taking care of you. There's no impediments to you being generous, to being able to give and to care for those that are struggling, right? Because you don't have to worry that if you give to somebody else, there's not going to be enough for you later. You're able to share with other people. I spent a lot of time looking for this picture. And you might find it odd that I spent a lot of time. But the, the thing is, what I like about this picture is most of the pictures of people giving something to the poor, it's like this, Right? But we as Christians, we all know that God has given to us. We're the poor as well. And so how we give is out of the goodness that God has given us, we give a cross. We give a cross to somebody who is another fellow human being. We're not giving down like, look at all this great stuff I got. I'm giving to you. Look how great I am. But we have received God's goodness. We don't have to worry. We've got plenty, and they've got plenty too. And part of their plenty is coming from me because I want to share with my brothers and sisters that are just like me that are also in need of that grace that God has given to me. Don't worry. You have all you need to be generous. And I think that's how God wants us to live as his people, to live a worry-free life where we can just share the goodness of God that's come into our life and share it with those that God brings into our path. Four, read with me. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Kind of an interesting way for Jesus to end. And basically he just says, look, you know, whatever's most important to you, whatever's the highest priority for you, that's where your heart's going to be at. And do you want your heart to be focused on uh, the latest technology? Do you want your heart to be focused on uh, the things of the world and all those worries and things? Or do you want your heart to be focused on loving the people that God's put in front of you, putting people as a priority and allowing your life to just live as a life of generosity? That's what Jesus has for us. Any thoughts or comments? Yeah. It's natural to worry, he said, Betty, but, but as you read the scriptures, it reminds you that you really don't need to worry, right? Okay, good. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Yeah, God's peace erases the worry. It's tempting, right? I mean, I, I, whenever I preach to you guys, remember that I'm, I'm first preaching to me. I mean, I, I, like, I don't have this all figured out. You know, I, I struggle with things as, and, and, and the like. But God's right. God's peace helps us not to worry about things. Yep. He's with us all the time, every day. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much uh, for your promises. Uh, that we, 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 your warriors here on earth, um, need your peace to supplant that worry and allow us to truly uh, walk in faith and to trust you and to live those generous lives that you've created us to live. Fill us with your spirit that this can become a reality in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay.